Hello JRPG fans, so I just finished up, actually it was yesterday, I'm losing track of days, but I was at the EB Expo, covering that I got a media pass from EB Games, for those of you that don't know, EB Games is the biggest gaming retailer in Australia and they put on a very cool expo every year that has a bunch of games that are coming out and attractions and stalls and buy cool stuff and play a lot of games that are coming out in the near future and even some that are coming out in quite a distant future or at least 2017 at this expo so it was very cool and I'm going to be making a series of videos because I played a lot of different games and some of them require more time than others. Some of them I don't have a great opinion on. So this first video is going to go over the expo in general, the kind of stuff that was there, the layout uh, and, and all the cool stuff that I experienced. And I'll also give a rundown of the videos that I'll be doing in the future and I guess I should do that right now. So what I will be doing is a video dedicated to the Nintendo games that I played. So I got to play uh, Paper Mario Color Splash. I got to play the new Mario Party Star Rush. And I'll also be doing a separate video for Nintendo because I will specifically be doing a video for Zelda Breath of the Wild. I got to play that. Spoilers, it's incredible, but I'll be doing an impressions video on that by itself. And I'll also be doing uh, the other games in the list. So there's a lot of Square Enix stuff, um, World of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 15, and Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Remix. And I'll probably chuck in the other games that I played in with that video. That'll cover the bulk. So the expo in general, it's, it's a fantastic environment. It's really good. It's really well set up. Um, it's easy to find all the stuff. It's easy to find all of the stands, the attractions, the booths. It's, it's all really well laid out and pretty much everybody was there. Everybody was there showing off their stuff. Um, Square Enix, uh, they don't have, I mean, Square Enix, I don't think recognize that Australia is a country <laughs> because um, Bandai Namco, Bamco, the great people at Bandai Namco, uh, they do supply for all Square Enix stuff down here in Australia. And so their booth also has everything Square Enix in it. and the Bandai Namco booth was my favorite booth purely for that because there is just so much awesomeness there. Um, obviously they have their own games, Tekken and uh, Xenoverse 2, so they had Xenoverse 2 there which I got to play, but in addition to that they also had Final Fantasy 15, World of Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Remix. Uh, I would have loved to have seen a Tales of Berseria um, demo there, but uh, it's maybe just a little bit too early for that. It's probably in pretty early stages of localization. But uh, the cool stuff that was there, so they had uh, a Thermal Take booth. Thermal Take probably had one of the coolest um, hardware booths there. They had a bunch of really awesome custom PCs, um, really uh, extravagant uh, water cooling setups and really cool custom cases, um, which they should be behind you right now. I got some video of that. Um, yeah, they had some really cool stuff there, Thermal Take. Uh, there's a bunch of other hardware people there, Rock Hat and Razer and Logitech. And Logitech had a had a pretty extravagant uh, eSports booth. I didn't get much video of that, unfortunately, but um, the, the other the other hardware people may be lacking a little bit. Rock Hat did have some really cool um, stuff on display and you could, you could actually get a feel for them. Their new keyboard, um, the media keyboard I can't remember the name of that but it was it was really really good um, it's that's definitely probably on my to buy list when I do need a new keyboard because it was very cool um, very cool to use very functional um, now one of the coolest things they had at the expo uh, was the Mountain Dew Velo drone and I was confused as to what the hell that was, um, but the Velodrone was this uh, game, I guess you could call it, put on by um, Mountain Dew, and it was this big sort of like netted enclosure, and uh, they got a bunch of people up, and they get sort of like laser tag guns, um, and 
you're not like shooting each other, it's not like laser tag. What you're actually doing is, um, is trying to shoot down drones. So Mountain Dew have their own employees there and they're, uh, they are controlling the drones, um, which are flying around. They have like lights and stuff on them. And essentially it's, uh, you're competing with the other people trying to get rack up the most points by shooting these drones and there was like smoke and uh, trees and all that kind of stuff to obscure it and it was pretty high so um it, it was uh it was a lot of fun and i got plenty of video of that which should have been playing behind you yeah it was it was a really cool uh, little thing and it the music was blaring they were giving out free mountain dew and it yeah at, at the back obviously the further you go down the less and less impressive the booths get and that was sort of right down the end and that really livened up that whole area um, it just it was sort of a spectacle and it was uh, really well placed I thought it was a really good um, the showing like I, I won't be really talking much about Microsoft games um, that were at the expo because to be honest uh, pretty much none of them interested me um, you guys know my name is JRPG, right? I run a channel dedicated to JRPGs, mostly JRPGs anyway, and that is not Microsoft's strong suit. Um, from what I saw, their booth was pretty well set up, um, and there were definitely long lines. And I can obviously we can appreciate um, people who do like um, games that are on the Xbox One, um, and they had yeah they had gears there the new gears um, which I didn't I didn't play um, but it, it gears is something that I have enjoyed um, from time to time. I had Forza Horizon 3 there which is already out and they had uh, a Recore there which is already out so I, I don't know I think they they could have been a little bit more focused maybe on the upcoming games with Microsoft but they still had a very popular booth uh, the. The company that probably put on the uh, most impressive booth, other than other than Sony, I mean Sony's sort of a given there. They were the, sort of the showcase of the expo. They had the biggest, massive booth, and they had like separate v PlayStation virtual reality setups, and they had Horizon Zero Dawn and all their new games, and they had like uh, every single one of their PlayStations that's ever come out, except they were missing one, the limited edition Final Fantasy Type Zero. Uh, that PlayStation 4 was not there, which I did point out to them, and they were very sorry. They weren't really. Uh, but obviously, I just don't think they got an official release over here, so they didn't really put it out. Um, but they had, yeah, the PlayStation 4 Pro and everything lined up. The, uh, I mean, I thought the PlayStation 4 Pro was the ugliest thing I'd ever seen when they first unveiled it, but not as ugly as I thought. It's actually about the same size as the current PS4 is now. Not the slim, the, the, the main PS4. Um, it's about the same size as that. I thought it was going to be like this massive monstrosity, but no, and it actually looks fairly sleek and, and fine. Um, I don't like the new vertical stands, though. The new vertical stands don't interest me at all for the Pro and the, and the slim. Uh, I'm not liking them. I like the, the stand that came with the uh, PlayStation 4, the first one. Um, so, as I was saying a while back, Ubisoft. Ubisoft really know how to put on a booth. Um, I mean, especially because they've got a game out that it probably doesn't interest most core gamers, um, which is Just Dance. And they have that basically front and center out the front, but they have that. They have like, uh, I don't know if they're Ubisoft employees or professional dancers or what, but they essentially dance the whole day and they look exhausted by like halfway through the day they like dancing away and they get you know other people up there's basically this uh really cool like disco type dance floor with all lights and stuff flashing around and they get kids up and they get n not so little kids up and uh everybody gets up and has a bit of fun <coughs> excuse me um, yeah, so that's like front and center. So everybody's attention is drawn sort of like straight to Ubisoft as you come in because there's always like something big going on. There's, this, uh, there's laughs and there's fun. And, um, and yeah, the, the professional guys are at the back always there. So I've got their own stage and they're doing the dance along to show you how it's done. Um, yeah, it's great. And they, they had a, a bunch of good games on show as well. And there was always massive lines for that. Uh, one game that I really regret uh, not getting a chance to play was the new South Park um, RPG, uh, The Fractured But Whole. Um, that looked, that had a, just a massive line all day. But I'm sure that'll be excellent from Obsidian. I, I don't doubt that uh, that'll be great. 
So overall, my experience at the expo was fantastic. Uh, the they had like a mega store in there, which was you know essentially like a, an EB game store and a Zing store, Zing Pop Culture. Um, it's like statues and high-end collectibles and that sort of thing, and they had you know massive discounts and all that stuff in there. It's great. Uh, one of the coolest like retailing booths there was the uh, waiter, waiter workshop, which are the guys that do like all the professional movie props for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and, and the new Warcraft uh, movie. And oh man, they had just have some cool stuff. Like uh, they let me back there, let me touch all <laughs> and touch all the stuff and had like Saruman's staff, um, which was just great. And yeah, like all the little intricate stuff, little just like keys and stuff from the Hobbit movies. Um, they make some really, really cool stuff. And I mean, I have uh, a couple of their things already and I just want like everything they make. It was really cool. So overall, I had a great time. I was only there for the Sunday, um, but I had a great time. The, the media pass uh, yeah, sort of let me in. I got to got to mingle and I got to play some games without any, uh, without any cues and I picked my games well. So great. And I would recommend any of you uh, hitting up the EB Expo next year, it's uh, it's a great experience. It's really good, and you have a chance uh, f for the ticket price. You have a chance to play um, a lot of games, a lot of games. Um, if you get there early enough, the queues really aren't even that long. You could get in, experience everything. Um, obviously, towards the middle of the day, the more popular times, there are long queues for like playstation vr for one they had like a drive club set up and they had a uh, resident evil set up and obviously there were big cues for that getting towards the middle of the day but um yeah i mean you have the chance to experience so much um the tickets are only like 40 dollars uh you get to go all day yeah some very cool stuff um i had a great time i recommend it for you guys next year now watch out for my other videos because yeah i will be doing uh one dedicated to the games that i played i'll give you like uh yeah what i thought of them what i thought going in what i thought afterwards just my general impressions uh, and i'll be doing like one for nintendo one for zelda one for Square Enix and probably just the other things like Square Enix and Bandai Namco in in one um, and I'll probably chuck Horizon Zero Dawn in there as well because I did get a chance to play that really good as well. So thanks for watching guys uh, I will see you all soon